a quick thing. Thank you. The recording is now in progress, and I want to officially um, welcome you to our fourth and final uh, webinar of the Chapter Academy series with an idea that there are continuing opportunities to learn. The Chapter Resource Library is, of course, an amazing place for you to find all kinds of things, as well as find people. That's right. The chapter subject matter experts, the, there is um, an incredible program and you get paired with the right expert for you. Now, I want to also mention that that it gets a, hot, a lot of focus at the um, academy, but sometimes I think people don't understand that the tool is an all year long tool. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the chapter dashboard. I'm talking about this tool, which is designed to serve as a playbook for you for setting goals and metrics, a guide for you in helping you make decisions about priorities and strategies, a tool for annual planning. But I think the fourth item might be the most exciting one because this is also how we glean trends and success stories that we in turn can share back. So it's a it's a really valuable um, tool that's in a, your uh, tool belt now. And we are super excited about already some of the participation in there and welcome your questions and ongoing support of it. Now, I like to give you those couple of little plugs to remind you that, that this may be a webinar and maybe the last webinar, but we have lots of opportunities for you. Today, our focus is going to be on AI and your chapter. Now, before we get too deep into this conversation, if you don't mind, I'd like to find out a little bit about you and your understanding of AI. So let me go ahead and pull a couple of polls up. So the first poll I wanna launch for you all to, to, um, to, to weigh in on is, how would you rate your experience with AI, AI technologies? We're looking to see if you're a beginner, are you an intermediate, are you advanced? Maybe you're on this call because you're like, I don't know, what's AI? <laughs> now, chances are um, that you sort of have heard of it, but you may not understand its application necessarily to your world. And by your world, I mean the world of procurement and the world of chapter leadership. So feel free to put that because we are here actually to address no matter what level you are. So beginner, intermediate, or advanced? I've got almost everybody weighed in. This is fabulous. Super excited to see this. All right, let me go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. As soon as I always want to stop, as soon as I do, someone else pops in. There we go. All right. So I'm excited to show that there's actually almost a tie. We've got a fair number of people here who view themselves as intermediates and a beautiful selection of beginners. So I think this is going to be a great conversation. Let me ask the next question. I'd love to know um, the attitude, your attitudes for AI. It says like it's already been launched, I think. Now you all see this one? Okay, that's really interesting. <laughs> um, let's try this. There we go, here it goes. Oh, if only AI would take over everything. <laughs> Here we go. Which statement best describes your attitude? I'm excited. I see it as a powerful tool. Great potential. Hmm, I think it's got some promise, but I just feel risky all over. And I'm just not really sure about the benefits and um, quite, quite, quite honestly, even its impact. So excited, cautious, skeptical. What is your attitude about AI? And I love the fact that the word attitude has a little attitude in it. There we go. <laughs> All right. I see a little bit of hesitancy. A couple of people are trying to say, hmm, Peggy, I'm not certain. So give another a second or two here. Here we go. All right. Let me go ahead and share that poll. 
So I say this to Brooke, we've got a number of people here who are cautious, but we do have some fans, some fans in the room and a couple that are skeptics. So this should be a lot of fun for us to um, have this conversation. And um, all I can suggest is uh, keep an open mind, my skeptics. I totally get it. Um, I'm a little skeptical at times as well. Um, so let's do this. Let's go to our final one here. I want to know if you are already using AI for anything in your chapter. Now, this is a long list of questions, so I'm going to ask you to be sure to scroll down. If you see a gray bar, it means it's not fully opened. But curious, do you use it for recruiting volunteers, for creating newsletter articles, for marketing on social media? Maybe you're putting it in there to say, what does this legislation mean? Um, sometimes it's about just, uh, I, you know, the bylaw says this and I needed to say this. Maybe, though, you're thinking to yourself, how do I create more exciting agendas? You know, you can also use AI for things like uh, uh, sending renewal notices, for data analysis, for even elections. So all these very cool things. And um, the one of the things that I found really useful and I've used several times now is to help me with writing meeting minutes. So I don't know if, how many of you have checked that out, but it's a pretty handy thing. So um, I know it's a longer question. Let me give you a few extra um, seconds here to answer this. A long list, and uh, we're just looking to see if you have. Now, I'm going to ask you in chat to share a little bit about your answer. Okay, Doug, I love it. That's exactly what we need you to do. Um, we didn't put a... None of the above, because we're suggesting that you, if you use it, put something in. If not, go ahead and um, throw in chat, because I know a number of you said you're beginners. So I know that not everybody is using it. Excellent. Oh, Alina says every day, all the things. I love that. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Catherine, that's a neat way of doing that or using it for the chapter Facebook page. Use it for training questions. I'm assuming that's in your day job. Excellent. But it could also be for your volunteer job. Excellent. Social media on LinkedIn. Okay, great. Um, let me go ahead and end the poll and share it for yourselves because um, the cool thing here is you can see that folks are using it for writing. They're not necessarily using it for many of the other things. So I think today's conversation is going to be really fun. So let me go ahead and get us right into the conversation now. I am super excited that we have got Brooke with us. Now, what you need to know about Brooke is you can read her whole bio, and I have it in front of me, and there's a lot of great things. I really love this idea that she has an uh, art history background, right? <laughs> but I think the most important thing is to know she's a former uh, chapter president in Utah and an early adopter of AI. And her motto is dream big, work hard, stay focused, and surround yourself with good people. And with that, I am going to go ahead and turn it over to her. Thank you so much. I, I forgot that I had that as my motto. Um, I used that as, as my mantra for a long time. Um, and my art history degree, honestly, was to get me a trip to Europe to do a study abroad. And then I was halfway done with the course. I'm like, well, I might as well finish finish this. So if I, if I could do it over again, I would have changed my uh, my degree. But here I am. Um, I, I did end up going back and getting my master's. So that was fun. Um, I am excited to be here. Uh, first off, I just wanted to tell you a little bit, uh, a little story about me, but I have been in local government for 20 years, almost, almost 20 years. And about six years ago, I was looking for a new job and they were hiring at Murray City, a purchasing agent slash deputy city recorder. And I knew the deputy city re recorder position. That's what I had uh, my background in. And I'm like, oh, I like, I like buying things. I, I think I can do that. And so I applied and they gave me the position and, and the first day on the job, um, I realized that it was like 95% purchasing agent and 5% city recorder duties if she was out of town. And the first day, the mayor and the chief administrative officer came to my office and in introduced themselves and said, hey, by the way, we're building a $35 million new city hall. 
we need you, your help to write an RFP about uh, hiring an architect and a construction manager. And I'm like, oh yeah, that sounds great. That's awesome. And I remember them leaving my office and I immediately went to Google and searched what's an RFP. I had no clue what I was getting into. And um, I kind of had a freak out moment. I'm like, holy crap, I just accepted a job I know nothing about. So I did some research and I found the state uh, the state had a purchasing division. I'm like, they know what to do. Maybe they've built big buildings. I'm going to call. And so I called and uh, someone answered their phone. Thank goodness. And I had him on speed dial for the next year. And I called him almost every day. And I'm like, hey, Solomon, I've got, I've got this situation. I've accepted a job. I need to write an RFP about X, Y, and Z. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't want to embarrass my city and I don't want to get fired. Tell me as much information as possible, like as quickly as possible and help me get through this. And he pointed me to NIGP and said they might be a good resource. And so I immediately went to NIGP's website and searched. I clicked every button I could click. Um, I read a ton of stuff and found the Insight community, started posting. I put on, I remember putting on Insight community, like, has anyone written an RFP about this? <laughs> no one responded. Uh, but then I found my chapter, the Utah chapter, started serving there. And, and I've realized quickly that I'm, I'm going to need to build a community of members that know purchasing and build up that network. So I found the Utah chapter, started serving with them, started serving with the NIGP national organization in their pipeline and placement committee, which is an awesome committee if anyone's interested in joining one of those committees. And then um, now I'm serving on the finance council and I just adore what NIGP has been able to do for the purchasing community and being a resource for us as individuals and us as um, professionals in the chapters trying to help other people in our organization. So I just have to give a huge plug and shout out to NIGP for all that they have done for me and uh, being a resource. I'm sharing my screen now. Let me move some things around. You can all see it, I think. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So um, just just again, I, I just love the chapter, or um, NIGP and all the things that the chapter does. We are preparing for forum this year, and I would like to reiterate to you as as professionals and, and communicating with your members that there's going to be a lot of AI discussions at chapter. Uh, Lena Croy with Oklahoma, she's on this uh, call right now. She's working, uh, we, we're both working on a um, presentation for you on specifications. There's also a learning lab that it talks about technology and AI and the implications and cybersecurity and things like that. Um, please reiterate to your members about these resources because the more we're learning about AI, the more we realize that it's here to stay and we need to start educating our members on how to use these resources. So today my presentation is split up into like four sections. And the first section is just an intro. Like if you have not touched AI, um, we're gonna go over some slides, really basic information just to get you familiar with it. The second part is gonna be uh, like things to know about AI and things, if you're using it, these are things that you should be aware of. And then we're gonna go over resources and then we're gonna do a breakout room and we're gonna actually have live demos in three different breakout rooms. And then we'll come back and discuss what we've learned and some of the tech tools and techniques that we've had moving forward. So really quick, just starting off, if you haven't used AI, you can sign up for a free account. They have a paid version of free account. If you are just intro, keep the free account. That's fine. If you're doing it professionally, I would recommend by doing the paid version. It's $20 a month. Um, right here, it's the, oh yeah, right here, GPT-4. But here's your main page. Um, you'll have your conversation back and forth right here. Down here is your prompt bar, or basically it's your Google search bar, but Google on extreme, uh, like it's Google to the extreme. I want you to pay attention. The here, right here, is the send button on the bottom right hand corner, and then right below it is a question mark. I would recommend every month you go into that question mark and see what new um, information is being posted. This is directly from OpenAI, who hosts. ChatGPT. Oh, and I, and I want to say too, 
when I'm talking about AI, I'm going to talk a lot about ChatGPT because they're the originals, but there's other uh, accounts that we'll talk about later on um, that you can use that are just as great or if, if not better. So um, really quick down here is on your history bar. You can rename those and delete them if you want. There's some ethical questions on deleting stuff and um, some transparency things that we need. we'll go over quickly, but I wanted to let you know that is available. And then right at the bottom is your account. And um, you can click on your account and give it gives you some more information as well. So when I'm talking about a prompt, I'm talking about putting in so say you're doing a Google search bar about what a purchasing agent is. You can do a same similar request, but ask AI to say, what is, uh, what is a purchasing agent in 30 words or less? And then when you push enter, it will respond back, <clears throat> giving you a really quick scenario of what that purchasing agent is and what it does or what they do. Really quick, um, they also have at the very beginning, they say, hey, ask us any question. Uh, don't be afraid to do anything. And then it has reminders to don't share sensitive information and make sure to check the facts. So when you get your responses back, make sure that it matches what you are trying to accomplish. Another cool thing is if you click on your name and go into your account, you can have custom instructions. And custom instructions are basically a fine tool to say, hey, I want you to act as a personal assistant to me. I am a procurement professional. Uh, these are my missions and values and guiding principles that I work off of. And this is how I want you to respond. You can turn that feature on and it will respond as a assistant to you. Um, the only caveat I would, or it, only thing I would recommend though is if you turn it on and you wear multiple roles or have multiple roles like myself, or um, you do multiple things and one day you're a procurement professional and the next hour you're a finance person and the next hour you're doing something else, you gotta make sure to turn those roles on and off or dilute them enough that it becomes more like you. But you can, in essence, make it become uh, familiar with who you are and, and the key values that you have. Uh, another cool feature, they haven't released this yet, and, and I'm quite surprised because they they announced this about a month ago, but they AI is going to be able to remember who you are and have like a new memory feature. So as you're building your prompts, it's going to say, okay, this person likes to ask about RFPs or this person likes to be, is a procurement professional um, and they like X, Y, and Z. And then you should be able to have that feature to uh, delete those or edit those memories, but it's basically building a database saying, this is what you were requesting and this is how I'm going to respond to better assist you in those features. So watch out for that as you, if you get a membership. One of the new terms about AI is called stacking. And basically there's a lot of AI programs out there right now. And a lot of, a lot of them are great and they have a great resource, but they all answer a little bit differently. Um, you can go to ChatGPT and put a prompt in, <clears throat> excuse me, and it will give you a fluffy response. It gives grandiose words. It likes to exaggerate. It's just very like bam in your face. It's your, it's the best friend that is like over the top. Um, what they recommend is putting that same prompt in other different pro AI programs and then comparing and contrasting and pooling information and then creating your own content with that. So Claude is another one that I like to use. It's very professional sounding. It has a lot of text available for it. Um, and it's just a great resource. And then Perplexity is another one that I love. It's backed up by Jeff Bezos and a couple other big heavy hitters with lots of money. They, um, what I like about Perplexity is it will hyperlink where it pulled the information. So if you say, hey, help me create a public procurement manual, it will create one and then you can hyperlink and it, will, and it will take you to New York's procurement manual and it will take you to Ohio's procurement manual. And then you can fine tune it and say, hey, give me a procurement manual uh, in Utah or in California. And then it will start pulling resources from that state as well. So, and then, then you have a chance to verify the content 
and the information that you're putting out there. So that's a great resource. But basically, the key term is put your prompt in more places and then figure out what the prompt, what response works best for you or create your own based on the information that the AI has given you. I talked a little bit about the different AI programs, but there's several, there's thousands of them out there right now. Here are some ones that I've tried out. Um, I just wanted to go briefly over ChatGBT. There's free and paid versions on all of these. Uh, the ver paid version is going to be better, uh, but the free version gets you there if you are just experimenting or trying out. But Claude 2 is great. Copilot is really fun. They have an app on your phone that's really uh, can be quick, quick. And then Perplexity, again, is a great one. I've tried Julius a couple times. You don't get that many prompts available. I think you get like 15 a month and then it runs out and you won't be able to use it again. But um, if you're building a presentation, they're really good to use. And then the Gemini program, it's had some troubles in its early days. Um, I think they'll be able to get off the ground, but We'll see. But there, if you use a different program, feel free to put it in chat or if you've experimented in, with a different program, I'd love to see what you guys are using as well. Okay, so if you are using AI, uh, there's it's called prompt engineering. And basically prompt engineering is when you go to Google and you put in your prompt or your, your request, if you're looking for an RFP or something, it's going to respond back with a list of sites that have similar information for what you are looking for. And then what AI does is it goes into those sites. It does a similar similar research with a mathematical calculation, goes into those sites, extracts data, and then puts it into a paragraph form or in a way that it makes it interesting for you or to understand. But what you need to realize that if you are putting a prompt in and you're not getting a response out like you want, your prompt's wrong. Um, and there's techniques and ways you can improve your prompt to make sure you get the information out there that you need and want. So when I'm talking about putting a prompt, if you are, here's something relatable that you can uh, kind of relate to. So if you're a parent and you ask your kid to go clean their room, you as a parent know what clean the room means. Does your kid understand the concept that you're trying to get. That's the same thing with AI. It does not understand what clean your room means. So when you're putting a prompt in saying, hey, I'm a parent, I'm asking my kid to do this. I want them to clean the room. And by clean the room, I mean, make their bed, hang up their clothes, clean off their desk, vacuum, dust. And you're giving it all the specific information about what you want it to accomplish and how you want it to be accomplished. And then your prompt will come out uh, correctly. Another thing is, is if you know what you want to say, but you don't know how to say it, this is a great tool because you can put all that information in your head about what you want to say, and then it can take that information and put it into a letter format. Um, one of the examples I have is I had to write a, um, we had a vendor that was really upset. Um, there was a lot of mistakes made and he was threatening pro uh, protest, and another vendor was threatening protest. If he pro if he didn't protest, he was gonna. It was just a huge, huge mistake. Uh, like, uh, and not on my part, but we had a tough decision to make. And um, what I did, I was super emotional about it. Like there was lots of yelling and back and forth. I've never been in a scenario where this has happened before. And I started putting down all the facts about what happened in the scenario and why we made this certain decision. And then I had ChatGPT help me write a letter that we could send to the vendor explaining why we made this specific decision. And AI was able to take my emotion out of the letter and make it sound more professional and we, I sent it up to our attorneys and I sent it up to our subject matter expert and said, hey, read this letter. Are you okay with this? We deleted like one sentence, sent it off to the vendor within an hour, and um, they never protested because I put all the facts down there. And then AI was able, and I was angry, meanwhile, while I was putting these facts down. So I was a little bit of a capital B, if you know what I mean. But um, I AI was able to take that emotion out. So that was like one 
success story for me in using AI. So when you were talking about a uh, giving it a prompt, you basically want to have it perform a role or act like a role, uh, act like a role, perform a task, and in a specific format. So the basic structure of a prompt is, hey, I'm a chapter president for XYZ NIGP chapter. Help me write a newsletter about the upcoming trainings and a, dates and events that are happening in here. I want it to be in a professional setting or like an email communication blast. And then it knows how to respond to your request. So another one, I keep this in here just because um, your prompt can be long. It doesn't have to be super short, but say, I want to act like a procurement consultant. I'm going to provide you information about an RFP that I need. You're going to draft a comprehensive RFP that meets my organization's needs. These are what This is what I expect to be included in it. And then you can post that prompt and it will publish or respond with a, um, hopefully a response that's what you are expecting. Another thing you need to realize is you need Brooke, to turn on one second. Um, yep. this is an interesting question in the chat. Oh yeah. Do you find the chat GPT knows what all those roles are already, or do you need to explain what those roles mean? The roles of, uh, yeah, I do feel, let's go back. Let me go. Oops. There, uh, right here. Do they know what a buyer is or procurement agent is? Uh, yes. Have I had experience in doing other things? Not necessarily like a, but let me take that back. Um, you can ask it to be a physician. You can ask it to be an attorney. It will, it will probably give you a warning saying, hey, like you should probably check with a real attorney on this, but you can give it specific roles that are, are, in the uh, in the AI knowledge. And when I talk about AI knowledge, I talk about, let's talk about the generative pre-trained transformer. So ChatGPT, generative pre-trained transformer. Generate, generative means it generates content. Uh, you can give it a request and it will generate a response. It's basically going into the, the Google sites and extracting data with a very complicated mathematical equation. It's all mathematical based. Um, Pre-trained basically is anything on the internet uh, is in its memory base. So good or bad or biased, it has that knowledge base. So it knows what a procurement agent is. It knows what a manager is. It knows what an accountant is and how it does those tasks in a, in a data form. Um, so it has the basic understandings of it. And then transformer is how it translates that the Google sites that you have to go in and research the information it transforms that information into paragraph form or like a human content that is able to, that you are able to understand more easily than other forms of AI. Does that make sense? So is it, um, could it take, oh, here's another cool thing. Could it take a SAT or a um, law test and pass? Uh, they have been testing these programs based on that criteria, and it's passing those tests at like an 80% or above. It, sometimes it will be 70% if you're using the free version, but the the ones you're paying for, it is testing against those standards on those tests, and it's passing that in from those quizzes. So it's very smart, very quick, and it has a lot of information it can pull. Does that make sense? Perfect. Okay, we're going to keep going. If you have more questions, I pulled up my um, chat so now I can see stuff. So, But maybe feel free to interrupt me anyways. Um, targeting your audience. So again, ChatGPT knows a lot of information. It doesn't know who you're talking to. So when you have a role here of procurement professionals, you want to direct it to those procurement professionals. And then say your other role is... Um, Let's see what else could be there could be like a city employees. You want to direct it to those city employees. And another role could be community members or vendors or suppliers. You're going to want to make sure that you're directing it to your audience in your prompts. Um, 
and go from there. Another thing is, is ChatGPT gives a lot of fluff. And Jennifer Stefan was just saying, hey, I tried this out. It was very like grandiose and it didn't really, like it took a long time to get the responses back. But if you can trick it to say, uh, if you even put in your prompt, hey, no fluff, it will dumb it down, not dumb it down, but it will take all those grandiose words out and make it more relatable. Um, you could also say, hey, take your time on this. I really want you to think about it. And then it, for some reason, it slows down. It really does a math, like a, a slower calculation to get you a good response. And then another trick or tip that I have is to tell it, hey, if you do a good job, I'm going to give you a $200 tip. And for some reason, we don't know why <laughs> it works. But those are some tricks that you can do when you are trying to write letters or uh, give it a prompt and it just doesn't sound like you. A lot of times it, it won't sound like you and it, and you shouldn't just cut and paste information, but you can uh, have it become more like you with some of these little hacks. Okay, have you used this role? Have you used roles like Fitness Pro, Volunteer Leaders, Associate Pro? It seems to know each. I don't know what I'm that just, is. I was just making a comment that I've used all different kinds and they, oh. it, it seems to know. Okay. Oh, okay. you've used it. Yeah. Perfect. Um, I shouldn't, well, I will, I will tell the story, but we had a paramedic that her, his dad's thumb was dislocated. So he took him to the emergency room like he should. And he went to chat GPT. I just told him about it. He's like, Hey, how do I reset a thumb that's dislocated? And ChatGPT did the right thing saying, hey, like, I really can't give you that information. I'm not a medical expert. And then he came back and said, but I'm I'm a doctor. Like, I just want to make sure I know what, what I'm doing. And then ChatGPT was like, okay, here's how you do it. And so I'm like, I like looked at the, the paramedic. I'm like, you didn't reset his thumb. He's like, no, I didn't. But I wanted to see if AI would tell me how to do it. And it did. So you can trick it to give you information, but be cautious with that um, when you're doing it. But it is very, I just want to reiterate, it's very smart and it knows different roles that you can do. So things you need to know about AI. Um, here's some, here's some of the main concerns. Uh, the internet is biased. We, we know this. Um, and so it's pools information that may not uh, be correct. So when you are reviewing the response, make sure you're looking at it from eye of like, the biases that I might pull in. The great thing about public procurement is a lot of our information out there on the web is not diluted or saturated with content that's not related. There's not fake RFPs out there. There's not a lot of misguided information that I know of or that I could think of. So you're pretty in the, protected in this little bubble, but not completely. So just make sure you're watching it for biases. Um, AI also hallucinates. So when I'm talking about hallucinations, it's it's a term they've coined and used in AI, but basically it says if it doesn't understand your prompt, AI is programmed to answer regardless of a question that is good or not. So it will give you a response, but it might hallucinate how it wants you how it wants to respond to you. So just be careful about that. Um, another term that they've coined is drift. And what I mean by drift is you can go every day and say, hey, write me a letter as a chapter president about X, Y, and Z. And the next day you can say, hey, write me a letter as a chapter president about ABC, another thing. And then the next day you're saying, hey, write me a letter as a chapter president about blah, blah, blah. And AI will literally have the capacity to say, hey, this person asked me to write a letter as a chapter president, and I must not be doing it right. So I'm going to drift. I'm going to I'm going to think about a different way to respond to her and see if that is how she wants to, to be asked instead of giving me the right answer the first time again. So if it starts to drift, you've got to pull it back with your prompts and say, hey, no, this is what I really want you to do make sure to do it this way. And you can do that. You can ask AI, like it will respond to you and you can say, yeah, this didn't work. Like I want you to be more specific. And AI will literally come back and say, oh, I'm sorry, let me rewrite this. So keep about that, or uh, know about that. 
Also, transparency. There is no court case yet, and I say yet, about how transparent, transparent we are um, in what we what we put out there to the public as public uh, employees. Treat everything like your all your prompts are going to be published or available. Um, we've had the same same scrutiny and same like discussion when Google first came out is saying, is Google going to know or are people going to know what we're Googling? Um, I think it will be very similar with AI where a lot of times people, the public will not care what you're Googling or what you're prompting. Uh, when it becomes a problem is when you're caught lying, cheating, stealing, or there's an investigation. Um, but, uh, public also has the, like, we call it grandma here in Utah, but it's FOIA, like the Open Government Records Act. Um, we haven't had, that I've known, any people um, come and say, hey, I want to know what your prompt history is, or I want to know what your responses are, or what information are you using in the public that has been generated by AI. That hasn't technically happened yet. Um, there are probably rules that protect some of that content, but not all of that content. So when you are as public prof professional are putting in these prompts, make sure that you are looking at it as an eye with, with, with a critique eye and not putting yourself or making yourself vulnerable in situations where that information will be released. There was a prompt that I was putting in. I, I was working on a um change order request or like our threshold request for request for our procurement rules and i was trying to ask for an increase and i wanted to explain it very um how do i say this i wanted to explain it to, so the general public would understand and so i'm putting in my prompt saying hey i want you i i, I initially thought i'm like i should put do uh, explain why a change order request is important at like a fifth grade level. But then I thought, I'm like, if this gets released, the headliner is going to be uh, Brooke Smith thinks that the city council and the public only understand a fifth grade level. So I, I changed it and took out that fifth grade level and said, make it so the general public should understand. So you've got to be really critical about what prompts you're putting in there and how you are initiating it, if that makes sense. And then also your data risk. Data is like the new gold. Um, and AI is learning about you and your systems and your information with the information you're putting in your prompts. So it, like I said, it has that memory. It has the things that it's those guiding principles that you have put into AI. Um, so if you were giving it data that has personal privacy um, information in there, don't. Uh, but make sure you read it with a fine tooth comb and, and really extract information out there. I, I've done an RFP with the help of AI um, that I'll probably talk about during forum. And in hindsight, I would not have used Murray City. I would have not used the name. I would have dumbed information down. Um, to protect my agency. Was my risk uh, extreme? Not necessarily because I was posting it the next day, but in hindsight, I think I would have made sure that I would have protected my entity's information in knowing who is requesting it, why they're requesting it, and going from there. So that's just my, like, my key warnings for you when you're using AI. Another thing that you need to know is um, there's a lot of unknowns with AI and a lot of people are scared and AI is aware of this and um, OpenAI is the program for ChatGPT, but they have create, created a preparedness framework uh, document. It's a living document that describes and tracks and evaluates and forecasts the, any, against any catastrophic risk posed by using AI models. They've come up with five risks. Um, my next slide has four of them listed. I'll talk about the fifth. But what you need to know is they are 
actively trying to mitigate those risks moving forward. Um, the four that I'm talking about is cybersecurity. They have uh, as a medium threat level. Uh, you start seeing if you get emails, like you get those little spam emails saying, hey, you've got a warrant or hey, you owe us, here's a bill for blah, blah, blah. In the back in the day, it used to have misspelling words or the grammar was horrible. You knew it was from someone in a different country. And now they're using AI and AI has a certain tone and it's basically, hey, I hope you're having a fabulous day, by the way, blah, 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 blah. Um, be careful of those little cyber attacks that you could be getting yourself into. Don't believe everything you see. Another one is chemical warfare. Again, like I talked about resetting a thumb, uh, there's a lot of information out there. So uh, they have that, um, they have controls over there to help protect that, but it, it is a threat. Uh, the power of persuasion. This is going to be a big one, especially during the election year. I can't reiterate this enough. All the, all the city officials are talking about this. Um, I, I'm over uh, the election process here at Murray City, and so this is a huge concern for me, but because there's so many deep fakes and so much power, when you're really talking about AI, I'm, I'm giving you the introductory course, but for those professionals out there that know how to manipulate the system, uh, there can be some very convincing information out there that may not be correct. Um, so just be cautious of that. And then model anatomy is basically our robots going to take over the world. They have it as a low threat level. Um, I don't think it's going to happen, but you never know. And then the fifth one I don't have listed it is uh, the unknowns, unknowns. And that's what they title it, saying, what do we not know about using AI moving forward? Um, that is a low threat level, but they are constantly doing analysis and trying to figure out how AI is going to evolve and shift. And they do, they have started to see trends where some uh, jobs or some things that we do now may not be in our future, just like the horse and carriage um, was a trend back then. And now we've got the cars and we've got electric vehicles. Um, we're starting to see that shift in how things are going to move forward. Another thing you need to know is when you're talking, I'm getting all this information from that question mark on the on your main page of your AI. On the bottom right hand corner, there's a question mark, and I told you to double check that at least once a month. Here is where your content's being stored. When you're putting a prompt in, you, again, you're training the program, um, and people can potentially look at it. But basically, it's saying, "Where is my content? Is my content shared with third parties? It's shared with a select." group of trusted service providers. Where is my content being stored? Uh, it's with our trusted service providers in the US and around the world. They don't even tell us where they're storing it. They don't tell us who has access to it. Granted, they go through a whole confidentiality like framework and trying to like get people on the same page, but you're only as smart as your like you're only as safe as your weakest link. Link, uh, link there's a word. Um, so be careful about Again, about the content you're being, you're sharing with the AI. Um, can you use outputs from ChatGPT for commercial use? So not necessarily commercial use, but for your chapter use. Um, and AI has come back and says, you own it. If you put an input and we give you an output, you can do whatever you want with it, including reprinting, selling, merchandising. So technically, you could cut and paste that information and put it in a newsletter. I would not recommend that. But I, uh, but you can use information from it, and um, use that to generate information because essentially you are giving a giving it a prompt, and it's spitting out a response. So you are using it like an assistant, is if that's the best way to explain it. Um, just a reminder here um, for you as you use it, and and it, as you are training your members in your chapters. Um, I think a lot of people want to learn about AI, but help them set up clear guidelines. I think as NIGP, we are trying to set up a, a standard for procurement professionals to use 
regardless of our agency has a policy or not. Um, my, my agency doesn't have a policy. So I, I have set a standard for myself and I'm sharing those standards with other, with NIGP and other organizations that are trying to establish some guidelines and rules to use. Protect your data. Um, this is key. You don't want to release any information that could jeopardize uh, one, your your career or your position, but also jeopardize your agency or your community um, as a chapter, and then have some ethical guidelines in place. So really, when you start to use it, use it with an eye of um, a, like a critical eye and make sure you are following like the top rules and procedures that you need to use so you aren't jeopardizing any information. So um, I kept this in here. Again, when we're talking about stacking, I just want to talk quickly about some of the AI tools and the top AI tools that are used. This was probably a month ago. It's always shifting, but um, ChatGPT's, because it was first, it was, it's the primary, but Claude and Gemini Pro, um, Llama is another one. And Mistral is from France, and they've been getting a lot of good reviews. I haven't tried them out yet, but um, a lot of people are happy with their responses out. So that is the first part of my, my presentation. The second part, I just want to go over four slides about some chapter resources you can use um, in your chapters to help you out. And the first one is Canva. This presentation that I've prepared was done in Canva and basically you can go to Canva. Um, if you are a nonprofit, you can get a free account. Sometimes it takes two or three uh, requests to do the free account, but um, you could pay for a version or they have a free version. But basically you could put in there like PowerPoint presentation and it will about finances or something, and it will pull up PowerPoint presentations about finances or um, procurement. You could do a total, um, oh yeah, use it to make flyers. It's super fun, super convenient, and a great tool to use. And yeah, there's Peggy asked in the chat who uses it. If you use it, I'd love to see your flyers, but um, I think that's a great resource. Another cool thing that you could use is doodle polls. If you have a group of people that you need to schedule a meeting with, um, if you have never used this, this is the tool that will save your life. But basically you go in and you highlight, uh, hey, I am available at 9, 10, 11, 12 on this day. And then you put all your times you're available and then you send it out to your members and say, hey, when are you available? And they go through and check yeah, I'm available this day or I'm not available or I'm tentatively available. And then you can find really simply a day where all three of you or 15 of you can meet and um, create a meeting reminder right there. Um, I hate it when I get requests and say, hey, when are you available? And they list like times. I'm like, give me a doodle poll. It's so much easier to figure out when I'm available versus just an email. Um, Doodle also just announced last week or uh, that they have a new sign-up sheet. So now you can do a Doodle poll and say, hey, we've got 15 slots available at 10 o'clock and 13 slots available at 11 o'clock, and you can have people sign up for specific things. So that's going to be a really cool feature that they've rolled it out with. Um, okay. Uh, we've used, Gina has said, we use the poll via Outlook as well. Perfect. Alina has said she uses uh, Canva for social media presentations, flyers, agendas, business card, t-shirts, etc. I love it. Uh, started, okay. Chandra is doing a membership committee for starting a, a subscription for marketing. And Donna, I've used Canva with other groups to make graphics to go on social media. It's got pre-built, yeah, it has pre-built templates and with a lot of different user types. And it's so easy to edit. It's very user-friendly. That's what I love about it. And you signed up for Genius, but I like Doodle has both. Yeah. Um. Okay. Another thing. Otter AI, um, this is kind of like random, but if you um, are in a meeting, if you're doing your member uh, member meetings and you want a transcript of your meeting, you can use Otter AI to record it and also give you summaries. So it will 
it will record the meeting. You can link it up to Outlook. It will give you a full on transcript with audio backing in it. And then it will also give you a summary saying, oh, so-and-so was, was supposed to do this. Uh, Brooke was supposed to do this. You're supposed to do this by this deadline. And it helps you write minutes easier. Um, and it's just a great tool to use. They have a free version that uh, you get 30 minutes of recording time. Uh, and then you have to stop the recording and start it over and you get another 30 minutes. You can do that multiple times. You can get a paid version that does 90 minute meetings um, or a, another paid version. The top tier one is like 6,000 minutes. I use the free version for over a year. Didn't mind stopping and recording. If you're a secretary, stop and record that sucker and start it over and keep going. Um, I then would take those that transcript and go to ChatGBT and say, hey, help, help summarize this. And I post that tra or paste that transcript into AI and have AI do my meeting minutes for me. Super friendly tool. Another cool one, I had to put, I just saw a meme with uh, Ryan Gosling and I had to put, hey girl, because it's this program's called HeyGov. They're relatively new. They just came out of beta a couple months ago. Um, and I was on their like beta testing team. They have a free 30-day trial with that QR code if you want to try it. But basically, you upload your agenda from your meeting minutes and you upload your transcript or a recording of it and you say publish. Like it, you say write me meeting minutes that are short, long, medium and write it in a professional meeting tone and it will do the work for you. It's very simplified. Um, so if you have action items that need to be followed through, you want to make sure to read out read the outpost, but um, it's a great tool to use if you are busy and don't have time to do meeting minutes from your chapter events. Um, and again, like that QR code does, it should give you a three 30 day trial. You don't have to put a credit card in at the very first, um, but it's a great resource to use. And Or you can just go to HeyGov and search it yourself and sign up there. Okay, let's go on to our final thing. We've got about, we're going to spend about 15 minutes in these breakout rooms. We have three big breakout rooms that we're going to do, but one's about recruiting volunteers. Peggy's going to lead that one. Another one is going to be creating newsletter articles. Uh, I'm going to lead that one. And then marketing on social media. Charles is going to do that breakout room. But essentially we want you to pick a room and go to it. And then we're going to spend about 10, 15 minutes putting prompts into the AI programs and getting a response back and building out some content for your chapters to use. It's going to be a really hands-on demo. Um, if you have ideas you want to have help with prompts, let's put those in there. And then we'll come back and we will talk about what we learned or, or what we have and the resources we have available. So uh, Charles, will you do the breakout rooms and then we will go to those for a minute. And then Jennifer Stefan's going to pull us back in when the time is right. So the rooms are open. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome. All We're right. Pretty back here. I think we still have one. Is Peggy's group back? Yes, we are. Yeah, okay. Good, good. Awesome. So I wanted to go over really quickly what you guys went uh, talked about and uh, some things that you learned or any ideas, and this is open to everyone, not necessarily the leaders, but tell me what you learned. And let's start with, um, let's see, let's start with recruiting volunteers with Peggy's group. What are some things, well, what are some prompts and what are some things that you went over? So we got cut off. We were just really getting, starting to rock and roll, but, but <laughs> some of you go ahead and answer. What, what did you learn? They're going to be quiet. They are. <laughs> I'm sorry I cut you off. I'm sorry. So I thought it was helpful to see, like, having never used it, to see what some of the prompt responses were um, as far as, like, stuff that Peggy had searched before we started and seeing, like, what she'd asked and what response she got back. Um, I was curious, like, I guess I'll ask a question because I'd asked it in the room, but we didn't get a chance to address it, is how much... Do you find that you need to explain to the AI 
what it is. And we can come back to that. But that was something that I was curious about is like, can I just type in, I need a volunteering email and it will know what I'm talking about? Or do I have to tell it stuff in advance about this is what the chapter is and blah, 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 blah. So, um, but it was interesting to see what kinds of things it says to you having never used it. Yeah. If you want a basic response, you can put it in a basic prompt. But if you really want it to be like what you want it to do or like you really want it to have details, you got to give it information. You got to explain what clean your room means and basically say, all right, this is what I expect you to do and what I expect you to know. Um, it will pull some information from the web, but it will be basic information if you don't direct it in how you want it to answer. So that's that. What else did you guys learn for, uh, what are some things that you did to recruit volunteers? So we were just starting to um, work on an, an email, um, but I showed them first that I've got um, Otter IA uh, running in the background and the value of the notion that if um, you could interview a, a potential, a member rather, and ask them what their interests are, run Otter AI, and then you would get in their words what they're interested in, and you'd be able to do a personalized email um, as a reply. So Ooh. using sometimes using the technology in a, in a, in a, in, in that way, actually informs um, what you're doing and that you can then also um, take information, a transcript and ask for the key points, which would be, you'd be able to then turn into an article. Ginny. So I think we're, how we're going to actually implement this right away is for meeting minutes. Um, we've noticed that, you know, it's hard when you're a secretary trying to listen and also type and you don't capture everything. So we definitely want to do a pilot of this in our next meet, board meeting and see if it can produce a much better quality, uh, you know, recap that, you know, we can easily share to our, to our members. Nice. And for us to also, instead of having to proofread, if everybody will go, okay, what do you think? And then there's like, oh, there's this, this and that, that, that saves um, time to have to edit somebody. And I hate editing somebody, but like, you know, it needs to be, but this will time save. For yeah, sure. huge time saver for sure. Um, and just the convenience of it, because again, like you, you know what was said during the meeting, but how do you summarize that meeting, especially if it's a lengthy discussion or uh, something like that? It can really help you get that, those meeting minutes out there. Okay, let's go on to creating a newsletter. That was my group. Um, does anyone want to talk about some of the things that they? had like aha moments or anything there? Oh, I this is aha oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, my big thing was uh, when we were talking about uh, toward the end of, the, of our conversation, when we talked about loading in um, large documents and then asking it to spit out a one page document. Um, like you said, our, your procurement manual is several I mean, at least 45 pages long, but um, it's nice to have that uh, summary capability. Yeah. So uh, what I showed them is um, my procurement code is like 41 pages long and my new employees aren't going to read that. So I asked it to create a one page document explaining what our thresholds are, what our uh, definitions were and trying to, I, I created a matrix, which we'll probably go over. I'll review that in during forum as well. Um, but it's a really cool tool to give your employees that that knowledge about how they can buy things um, correctly through your agency. So it's cool. But we also used it for writing letters as a chapter president. We went to NIGP's website and took some data that was published there and saying, help me write an article about the importance of procurement and our procurement impact and things. And, and then we were going to fine tune it for each state or whatever chapter you're with. Um, and really trying to dial in articles that would be relevant for your members. So it's a really cool tool. Um, and then if, and if you want to add information in the chat, feel free to add more information if you don't want to speak up. But then let's go over to Charles with marketing on social media. We're kind of a small group. Uh, we started off with some tips and tricks on things in order to get new members to attend uh, a chapter meeting. And 
it provided some decent tips and tricks. It was just pretty much uh, no brainer type things. But then where we kind of, I felt like it really kind of shined was when we had it create the actual social media posts for new members and did a really good job of that. And then we had another uh, person I, I took a look at uh, creating a social media post for a golf tournament. And then we decided to look at some image creation. So I opened up the image creator and we created a new uh, golf image. Uh, right. And that's kind of how that went. Yep. That's awesome. It, it's also a great tool to use if you are starting out as a new chapter president or something and you want to like do new events, like have it write down, help, help you generate ideas that you can talk to your board about, um, whether it's a golf tournament or something else that you want to do, or if you see other chapters um do let's see i knew okay i prompted with government procurement on chapter website so i'm gonna share my screen again if i can um, Brooke, before you go on i mean so i we had two ringers in our group um they may not appreciate me saying that but i'm just going to say it um elisa and elena because both of them have done it before and i don't know if they wanted to we didn't get a chance to have yeah. them share much in the room but i'm just curious as to if they would add anything else to the conversation about how they're using it yeah that would be great sure um for my board what i had it do um is i asked it to because su succession planning is a hard thing and i've been on my board for a long time and hopefully i'm rolling off after this term um because i'm tired uh <laughs> and i dropped the constitution and the bylaws into chat uh, gbt and i have the paid version so i don't know if this would work on the free version um and i'm happy to share my screen if y'all don't yeah. want me cowboying yeah, the meeting please. here um because i thought i was really excited and i think i stole this idea from brooke but um it let me find the right screen is that chat gbt yep um i we started a forum um, and I was afraid that it would, you know, it's hard to pass that over. Oh, that's the wrong screen. Uh, let me dump it over here. I got too many screens. Um, there we go. So I told it to kind of create some, it was a long conversation, <laughs> a list of duties. Um, We're seeing your Zoom meetings. Oh, wrong one. I had it right the first time, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> My bad. Okay. So I told it to give me a list of duties by the board member and it didn't really do what I wanted so I said I want bullet points so you know Brick said to have conversations with it and this it really does work um so I I made it kind of break this out for me um and then I said oh actually I want you to be more granular like what specifically because you know as Peggy will tell you you have to have specific duties like people want to know like that's too high level keep membership records high handle membership related finances. I don't really know what that means. And that's, people aren't going to, what does that mean? So I had it break it down even further. Um, like what, well, actually I had to break it down further. And then I wanted a list of like, I'm a rule follower. And so I wanted to like, <laughs> what, per the constitution and the bylaws, what does the chapter really need to do? So define um, key dates and meeting guidelines. So it broke it out, you know, per the, per the bylaws, we're supposed to meet six times a year. We can have special meetings and then quorum. So it kind of went out there and, and broke some of those things out, kind of summarizing them because bylaws are hard to read sometimes. Um, and then I said, I want a calendar for like the scholarships. What does that look like? And then create an election schedule. And then that really, wasn't really I wanted like a calendar. So I told it that's not what I wanted. So I said, make it a calendar. Uh, so like Brooke said, make the prompts, you know, what you need it. So I said, I create an annual schedule, assuming, um, for change, assuming we want to award new scholarships in April um, with new board members beginning on January 1st and the chapter adopts the budget on January 1st. Um, you know, basically here's where change happens. Um, so then it said, here you go. So it says, um, it gave me a monthly schedule. I planned the meetings. It said, here's when the deadlines are due. Here's where your awards need to be coming out. Meet here, meet here, meet here. Start your nominations, get your nominations in do another meeting and then transition. So it just created out a schedule. Um, and then I told it to build a form schedule to plan the form for me. And it, it did that. Um, so it kind of built the form into it. And then the last thing I had it build out like a timeline for the forum. So nine months before, eight months before. Um, so kind of dummy proof things. So I could have something to hand to the next 
um, board. Lena, this is genius. That's Isn't it great? That's fascinating. And I didn't do it. And the other thing I'll say on media is I told it um, to create. And you'll notice I have different um, like hats that I wear. So up here I've got, I work, I help run the tri club. So I've got marketing for the tri club and then like professional stuff for OCAP because they're different worlds. Um, I told it for the tri club to create like 30 days of content for social media. Give me 30 ideas. Um, I, so give me a, a month's worth of content. And so then I wouldn't, cause it's hard to think of things to post. Um, so it gave me 30 days and I'll, I'll tell it to write me a post for LinkedIn. I'll tell it, you have to tell it what platform, cause what you put on LinkedIn is not the same thing you put on Instagram. Yeah. Um, so you do have to be specific and it'll write, write it for you. Um, and then I just go and I'll, oh, you can also use it to tell you what hashtags are trending, um, mm -hmm. based on what audiences you, you want, um, and I think hashtags are going away is what I've heard. Um, but when hashtags were a thing, you could tell it to use, here's your target audience, you know, 55 white males in the Midwest who ride their bikes, give me the hashtags to use. And it would spit out the hashtags and the buzzwords to use to kind of help you really target your market. Um, so it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I want to just highlight something that you know, what she just talked about. Let's just take just the um, writing the, 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 30 days, or I wouldn't go this long, wouldn't go longer than uh, probably 90 days. But imagine now if you have um, a communication, rather than the communications chair, what you have is a opportunity where you've got five or six people who have said, I'm willing to help out. Great. You hand them a list of, of, po of posts and you say, use these over the next couple of weeks um, as a volunteer. So you're making the volunteer job super, super simple. And then you simply say to the person, feel free to tweak it as much as you did. No, no, we did this in our chapter and it really supported us getting this, this social media pool going, but I had to do it manually. I mean, now AI can do it like that. And is it perfect? Perhaps not. Is it better than nothing? And if it and if it engages people to do a job for you, if they get involved with social media, cool. And they get a um, they get likes on that. They're going to want to do more for you. So the best way to do it and bring people through is that you you create you let them see success, experience success, feel success, and they want to do more. Jenny. Just a quick follow-up. Thanks, Alina, for that demo. I'm just curious, um, is there a, or Brooke, once all that spit out, the event planning, is there a format to download it so that, like, it spits it in Excel or it spits it in PDF so I don't have to do all that copy-paste or whatever? Um, you do. You still do have to do copy-paste. Um, I don't know of downloading it into the program. I know. Okay, and, I just saw the and, paper clip, so I wasn't well, sure if it was. And Alana that. was using the ChatGPT four, so just to you won't have those same features in the free version. So just pay attention right. to that. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, you will have to copy and paste it. From what I understand of AI, yeah. I don't think there's that feature yet. Unless yeah, I'm wrong, and someone else knows I'm wrong, they'll let me know. Um, we only have a couple minutes left, but just really quick, I wanted to go over. Um, creating, you can ask ChatGPT to create chapter activity ideas. Um, if you have a new legislation or, new, or something new about procurement happening in your state, copy that long legislation and say, help me ex explain this to me at like a high school level or explain this to me to a pro public procurement and have it make it so it makes sense and doesn't sound so legally. Because um, sometimes those are hard to understand what really changed and how it's going to affect you. Updating your bylaws, uh, creating meeting agendas and minutes we talked about, writing meeting minutes. You can help with your election campaign, or writing like information about why you should run or what to expect to run. Um, have it do like when you're doing renewal notice reminders, have it do some funny joke or something that's trending and have it re like a, re um, account for who your audience is and have it be kind of fun and interesting. Uh, you could have it help you do a reverse trade show planning guide. It, it could spit out a whole guide for you and how many volunteers you need to do to plan something that big. 
and do like membership data analysis. Um, and then I just really quick wanted to say like AI is going to change a lot about what we do, but we're still important. And what we are really going to need to focus on is our soft skills. So communication and, and as chapters of helping your members know how to communicate, help, help so motivate leadership, um, the ability to work, flexibility, teamwork. So work on that. And then I'm going to share my screen one last time. Um, I just have to plug our chapter has been doing uh, working with Southern Utah University to write a procurement course. It's an eight-week course. If you want, you can join that. It talks about procure procurement essentials, pretty cheap, um, and it can go towards a bachelor's. If and you might be able to transfer that and have that work there. Another cool tool is in your Insight communities. There's an AI in public procurement. There's about almost 300 members, but there's a lot of information shared on there. And then that's it of my presentation. But thank you for joining us today. If you have questions, I'll stay on for a couple minutes. Uh, feel free to email me or uh, put in the chat and I'd be happy to help you in your AI journey. And before we go, thank you. Thank First of all, can we just give her a big round of applause? Either use your emojis or just show me the clap there. <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful. Was this a great way to end our Chapter Academy 24? Should we begin our Chapter Academy 25 with the same topic and continue to talk about how we can use AI to make our yeah. jobs as volunteers better so we can get more volunteers? Give me an emoji. Give me an aha. Give me a yes. One of the things that we want to do for um, 25 is um, create more hands-on opportunities for learning. And so... Let me know in chat if that's something that you would like us to, to do. And um, now that we know that Elena and uh, Lisa are in our midst, uh, they know that they're going to be called on for that. Um, I just want to um, huge thanks to um, Brooke, um, huge thanks to all to Charles for helping us pull this off today. It, it takes a village and part of the reason why um, we love and we want to give you as much as you can is because we know that you are all important to the future of procurement. And so thank you. Jennifer, final words. Um, I think you thanked everybody. Um, this was exciting. Um, so I do look forward to us maybe taking this to the next level, to the next step. Um, while this is the last webinar for Academy, um, we're not over with teaching and supporting our chapters. We have three uh, webinars planned coming up, strategic planning, that officer boot camp that we talked about at the beginning of the year, um, as well as social media. So much more engagement uh, with us in the chapters in the coming months. So just watch for uh, those announcements. But thank you guys for your time. And again, thank you, Brooke. Um, for, for presenting this to us and, and twisting it into the chapter world and how our volunteers can use this to make their lives a little bit easier. But thank you guys, hey, Jen, appreciate it. Jen, Jen, the spreadsheet for to get credit for this webinar, I'm gonna submit that. You you need us to submit that, right? The Excel spreadsheet, we'd like the, the contact the hours. Yes, yes, that yes. goes. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Thank, hey, you. thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Donna, Donna mentioned that Insights appears to be view only. You can join it. Uh, it should be open for the public to join. So, yes, Donna, and if you have any issues with that or can't join, please um, let me know and I'll get you into the right hands. But that is should be a public group that you can join. Hope you hope you join. So, thank any you. other questions, people? Nope, no others. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Good to see you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Yeah.